What's up everyone, it's your boy Norm Rad 89 here bringing you another video today, a Rad Movie Review for Insidious The Last Key. Yes, we are on to the fourth Insidious film in the franchise and this is the second prequel in the franchise. And I'm going to spoil some stuff right now for you, just a little spoiler. I had a lot more fun with this film than Insidious Chapter 3, so today you're going to hear my positives, the negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. Insidious The Last Key came out in 2018, and this is the fourth installment in the franchise, and this one for me, let's just get right into the positives right away, is that this film, I really do have a lot more fun with this one. I know it falls into the camp of maybe being a film that has answers to questions that we didn't necessarily have as fans, but I like that this is a more personal story about Lynn Shea's character, Elise, and, you know, I'm a sucker for any film that has to deal with New Mexico. I am from here, born here, and raised and stuff. So when you're dealing with, oh, her background leads to she was raised in Five Keys, New Mexico, and she has to go back home to tackle a mystery like that just hits home with me. And I know, yeah, you're like Norrin or Robert Norrin. That's biased. That's a little biased. You're from New Mexico. It's Hell yeah, I'm freaking biased. Like, I enjoy seeing that in films, and I love when that aspect of the film, that's one of my favorite things about this one. But more than that, it's a personal thing with Elise's character, and I feel like this one, like, I like the character stuff that she has to go through in this film. The character arc that they take us on, I enjoy it a lot more with her in this film. Another really cool thing about this one that I didn't, that I like more than Insidious Chapter 3 is the fact that our demon, like the key demon or monster in this film, like the main villain character, I like the design. I like the creepy factor of it. Like, I love it how it has like different keys for fingers and it calls back to the red door and it's something that Elise, you know, unlocked and opened while she was a child. Like, there's so much history to it and I think Last Key is a film that unlike Insidious Chapter 3 where in my review for that one I said like I can pluck Insidious Chapter 3 out of the franchise and it wouldn't change a fucking thing. Insidious The Last Key is the opposite. I feel like if you removed this one from the franchise you would actually lose some stuff, some character development and some stuff that pays off like knowing more about Elise's character in this film and when you get to Red Door understanding what happened when she was a child, how that had a ramification and everything. So I really do like the world building and the history aspect to this film. And like I said, the demon character, our villain character, spot on, love the design of it. Another thing is I think this one is cool because it subverts your expectations at some points. We have kind of two, two dual storylines going on at the same time where we have a character that Elise is trying to help this man who calls upon help because he moved into, that, moved into the house that she lived at. And then we also have Elise kind of going through her history, kind of trying to tackle some stuff from her past. So we have these two storylines that I think coincide very well for me. And I think that it's just one of those films that has some creepy factor to it. And I'm invested with this film, unlike Insidious Chapter 3, where I'm not invested in the characters. I don't really care that much. This one has more of a, you know, murder mystery solving type aspect to it. And like I said, the fact that we're dealing with more history about Elise and it gives us more context to her character, more background. I'm so much happier with this film. Now let's get into some of the mixed and negatives because I definitely had a blast with this movie. I really did have a fun time with this one. But in terms of mixed and negatives, like, oh, one positive I must say before we get on to that is that I think the cinematography is really good in this one. The camera work, there's a lot of creepy shots and, like I said, atmosphere in this film that I didn't feel in the previous film. But now sliding on over to the mixed and negatives is I think there is a little bit of a pacing problem with this film in terms of... We have one storyline, like I like how the storylines do coincide together, but it's what point we end one of the storylines and then we carry on with the other one. It kind of feels like this crescendoing moment that we have and it's at the middle part of the film and then you have like another 35, 40 minutes of the film. You know what I mean? It's one of those kind of movies that has almost like a false ending in the middle of the movie and then you continue on with the story, learning more stuff. So I feel like... If we could have moved that middle part, the ending to one of our stories more towards the end, you know what I mean? In the third act or like the beginning of the third act leading us into the crescendoing part, like I think it would have worked a lot better. So I think there is a little bit 
of a pacing issue with this film for sure. And it's also, like I said, with one thing I kind of brought up already is that this film falls into the camp of kind of bringing up answers and questions that we really didn't have as, you know, fans or anything like that. So, but this one I feel falls into the Insidious franchise more. It has more connective tissue with the first two Insidious films and especially Red Door because I've seen that one already. So I, it has more connective tissue and I can feel it as a part of the franchise more than Insidious Chapter 3. So it seems to be with this franchise, I'm very fond of the even number ones. I'm huge on Insidious Chapter 2 and I love in, The Last Key right here, Insidious The Last Key. And in terms of a rating for this film, Insidious The Last Key is going to get a 7.5 out of 10. I think this is a very solid film, one that I would be down to return to. And like I said, I enjoyed it. And this was actually a first time watch for me. I've seen Insidious Chapter 1, 2, and 3 before, but The Last Key and The Red Door were both, of course, first time watches for me. So this was very exciting that this was quite the surprise for me, especially after I watched that third film and I was kind of down in the dumps. And then I watched Last Key and I was like, all right, all right, I'm more involved and more invested now. And I want to see what happens on the red door. So this one is hugely, that 7.5, it was a huge jump compared to where we were at with that third film. But these are just my thoughts and my opinions on the last key. That means I would love to hear from you all down in the comment section. Please share your thoughts and opinions so we can discuss. And be sure you're liked, subscribed, and notif notified. Have that notification bell poked, all that jazz, because that helps out the channel. And like I said, we're going to be on to... Pup Named Scooby-Doo next with our Scooby-Doo review series and then Insidious the Red Door and ranking the Insidious film. So you want to stay tuned to the channel. But most importantly, you all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.